So I think it's interesting we hear that AppCast is putting resources into social distribution and now Adzuna buys a social distribution company. Uh, I understand the need to meet people where they are um, in a social standpoint. Uh, it's also interesting that we're not hearing this from Indeed. I went to TikTok to check on a friend of the show, JT O'Donnell's account, where yeah. she gives advice to job seekers. She has 1.2 million followers on TikTok and, and posts with over a million, uh, a million views. So I think this thing has got legs. The only problem is how do you execute ads on Insta and TikTok? Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh. The podcast that's as hot as Bitcoin, bombs, and bad decisions in D.C. right about now. Hey, kids, it's the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Bomb Cyclone Cheeseman. And this is Chad Gravedigger Sowash. And on this week's episode, pimps, private equity, pickles, and acquisition palooza. Boom. Let's do this. At Shaker Recruitment Marketing, our comprehensive services include branding, talent attraction, MarTech, and analytics, empowering you to achieve your recruitment marketing goals. We believe in doing things the right way, delivering the right message through the right activation, achieving the right conversion. For us, business is deeply personal. Our legacy is built on relationships, Together with our people, clients, and partners, we've been shaping the world of talent for over 70 years. Well, this is a tale of two uh, locations. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That sun I, I woke up to snow, in. Ooh, uh, yeah. and Chad is like basking in in the sun, uh, living his best life. I, I Afternoon appreciate sun. that, Chad. Yes, <laughs> back home again in Portugal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we can we talk about the state of the world real quick? Uh, oh, sure. If, yeah. As if as if we don't need more stress. Like Trump's back. We're sh missiles deep into Russia. Aliens are apparently in our oceans. Uh, we got bomb cyclones, which I've never even heard of before. And we got Mike Tyson uh, fighting Jake Paul. Like, which of those is the most like, are you even paying attention to the, tr the travesties of the world? Or are you just immune to it? No, They're I mean, well, they, they, I, I'm, I'm not paying attention. And after the election, we have gone away from news. Plus, mm -hmm. I mean, we were bouncing all over Portugal, Spain, Gibraltar, drinking, eating wonderful food, seeing the sights. Then we capped it off. Uh, Julie uh, surprised me with a quick mm -hmm. trip to Amsterdam and Utrecht uh, for a couple of days. Um, and went to a couple of really cool places. I mean, a few good places we've never been. Never been to Nazare before, Keshkaish, mm -hmm. Kadir. Nice, uh, Gibraltar, Utrecht. So we've been we, we've been busy. We've been busy, and uh, we haven't been watching the news. So I'm no, sorry, not doing I'm, that. Shit. I'm a bit of a downer today. I apologize. <laughs> did you did you see the fight? Did you see the fight? Did you see no, Tyson's because, ass? Did you see? Did you see? No, him? no. I did, because everything nowadays, especially with these guys like the Jake Pauls of the world, yep. it all seems to have a script. Um, it, it almost feels like, uh, remember like WWF when we were growing up, not that it's any, any better today, but sure. I mean like the, you know, it, it felt fake. Uh, it just, the whole thing just felt fake. It's like the whole smack at the, at the weigh-ins that it was like, come yeah. on, man. I mean, it, it just felt like it. a big grift, just like it we was, were all it, taken. It is. We're all it is. taken, well, which is sad yeah. because you and I are of a certain age where boxing we remember oh, yeah. real boxing. Like I remember sitting yeah. with my dad watching Sugar Ray Leonard and, and yep. Hagler and Ali and and it it's it's a show now. You can fill up 
what yeah. seventy thousand people showed up live. I don't know how mm-hmm. many people watched uh, on Netflix. Netflix. At global yeah. scale, huge. I don't, maybe maybe we like the grift. Maybe we just like the show. We just we like the, the we, we like must. the slap and tickle. I we don't know. voted for it. Uh, we, we did voted vote. for yeah, it. We voted for it. It's in the White House. <laughs> it's on our TV. Uh, to, to be clear, I did not yeah. vote for it. But I mean, I remember watching a young Mike Tyson break Ferguson's nose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, it, that kind of stuff. They that stuff that just wasn't fake. It was true sport, and it just yeah. seems like we've 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 gone off the rails. I, I, I will say the the, place. The, 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 the the fight before that with the the women was pretty solid. Like that was oh, a okay. knockdown, drag out fight. And the first fight was was an Indian fighter. And I thought, wow, oh. this shit's global now. I, I've, I don't oh, yeah. ever remember seeing a boxer from India. Like if, if we can get yeah. countries all fighting each other, like <laughs> I think that would be high entertainment value. Have, have you never seen the Olympics before? Uh, that shit happens in the Olympics every four years. I've never seen a medal winner from <laughs> India and, and boxing before. Maybe I, I maybe did, I didn't missed say that. a medal maybe. winner, just that. <laughs> that they there have you boxers. Go. There you go. Oh man, I don't know. The world shit's falling apart, man. Let's get to shout let's out. get to shout outs. As you know, Chad, taken hey, sponsored. Hey, we're doing our movie. Don't wreck our sponsored show, by the wonder. Great White North Company. Uh, I, yes. feel like, I feel like I'm in the Great White North this morning. Uh, Kiora, that's like text it. recruiting made easy and affordable. Chad, what do you got for your first shout out? So week? my shout out goes to Indeed Flex. So you go on LinkedIn and you perform a search for flex jobs and the results are dominated by indeed flex on LinkedIn. Okay. Then you go click on the job, Mm -hmm. watch the URL and see the job was actually distributed by talent.com. Yes. Rival indeed and their indeed flex jobs are getting posted on LinkedIn, which that's not even the best part. The mm-hmm. best part is that talent.com, another Indeed rival, is posting them. So, so shout out to Indeed Flex for watching talent.com apparently dig their own goddamn graves. The stupidity in our talent. space like is bro. utterly amazing. Yeah. All the in, all the uh, the the interlove, if you will, all the uh, incestuous that goes on in our industry. God. Um, I think it's, job seekers are getting on. Uh, they're on to us. They're on to us. Uh, the employers, not so much, but I think the job seekers are, are almost, <laughs> almost on to us. Chad, we've been told that we have a face for podcasting. Yeah. Speak for yourself, man. One thing that I do know, and I just got this from mm-hmm. the analytics department over at YouTube and uh, Sergey, our, our video guy. 80% of the people who actually watch our videos are loyal watchers. They're back, right? Uh, they, they don't hit the subscribe button. So, hey, kids, hit the subscribe button. Tell them why, Joel. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, they're not, they're not, uh, there's some degenerates listening to the show on a regular basis. But yes, I, I think, I think if you're not tuned into us on YouTube, you're missing some exclusives that you can't get on the show. You're getting uh, outfits uh, that I don't normally wear on the show or just Chad. Uh, Euro Chad, you can't really appreciate Euro Chad unless you see Chad. The voice doesn't really, really come out. Uh, You get to see me in glamorous locations like right now. I'm in Canada visiting the in-laws. If you couldn't tell, I'm in a Canadian state of mind. So you're missing out on a lot if you're not watching us on YouTube and just listening to us on your favorite podcast podcast platform of choice here's one chipotle missed in my Uh-oh. my shout Uh-oh. outs chad i know that i know that you and you and julie love you some delta airlines uh oh, yeah. much like mm-hmm. much like my wife well they announced this week a partnership with shake shack yeah shake what? shack the burger the burger makers uh that oh, they, yeah. will, they will start uh offering shake shack on delta flights uh they'll start december of this year boston every it's flights over 900 miles that's the Mm -hmm. good news they're they're offering this now the bad news is like you know i'm i'm kind of a downer today sorry but you have to be on a you have to be on a first class flight 
to get your Shake Shack burger, uh, and it has to be 900 miles. So the the quick upgrade I get, like going from New York to Indiana, like yeah, that's not, not going to qualify. Yeah, I got to no. I got to like pay up. I got to pay a lot of money for my twenty dollar <laughs> uh, Shake Shack. You get a brownie, uh, I think fries and like a little salad thing. But hey, it's a start, man. It's a start. And I've always thought these food companies are missing a huge opportunity to like get their yeah. brand and their food. Uh, in the mouths yeah. of a lot of people who have no other option but to eat that food. So uh, shout out but, to our friends dude. at Shake Shack. Shout one, out. one of my favorite things that Alaska Airlines did, mm -hmm. uh, actually flew to Alaska the very first time flew uh, Alaska Airlines. They had uh, the Alaska Brewing Company beer mm. on okay. the airline. I was like, that, that is amazing. It's incredibly smart, and I don't have to drink a fucking Budweiser. Yeah. And that's easy. You don't have to cook it. It doesn't have, same, have the same quality of, you know, that you get yeah. in the restaurant. Like that's, that's, yeah. a, that's a no brainer. It's too easy. However, Chad, you know, mm. you don't have to be first class to get free shit from Chad and cheese. <laughs> we give it the, to the dregs of society, to the high, the CEO, everybody gets free shit from Chad and cheese. Tell them what they could win if they sign up. Well, listener, just so you know, Chad thinks that you're not the dreg of society. Uh, you got to sign up for free stuff at chadcheese.com slash free where you could win. You will get sent a T-shirt, right? You're going to get one of those sexy Chad and Cheese T-shirts, Aaron mm -hmm. app on the back, Aaron sponsoring mm -hmm. that, uh, bourbon barrel aged syrup from your boys up north, uh, Kiora, beer, craft beer. From our friends at Aspen Tech Labs, whiskey, two bottles of whiskey from your friends at Text Colonel slash Bullhorn. And if it's your birthday, you're going to want some rum from Plum. And you can only win if you play chadcheese.com slash free. I know I can. Mm -hmm. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. That's right, Chad. Some listeners are celebrating another trip around the sun. This was kind of sparse last week. It's a little, a little meatier this week. I'm happy to see uh, Jeff, <laughs> Robust. Jeff the Caveman Herndon is celebrating another year. Michelle Meehan, nice. Meehan Ooh, so horny. That's right. Her. Kyla Frazier, Quincy Valencia. I love Quincy Valencia. Jen Levine Riley, Tracy Harmon, Victoria Conley, Katrina Polanski, Jennifer there Sheridan, David Phoebus, Christopher Mannion, Brad DiPaolo, Felix Bindles, Joe Antonio, Tom Putrell, Jennifer Brooks, Kevin Wheeler, Tony wow. Lee, and Matt Charney Happy all celebrate birthday. another trip around the sun. Happy birthday to those listeners. And as you say trip, no, we're not traveling, kids. Well, I am traveling. It's more personal. But when we do travel, it's all because of Shaker Recruitment Marketing. Uh, and to be able to be reminiscent of that travel, you can go to YouTube or you can go to chadcheese.com mm -hmm. and you can watch or listen or listen to the green room sessions that we recorded at Wreckfest. That's right. The Shaker green room sessions, they were fun. They were short, nice and snackable. Go check them out. Yep. Now, where Chad was traveling last week was the loser column in fantasy <laughs> football. That's right. He ran up against a brick wall called the number one ranked Joel oh. Cheeseman uh, this week. Yeah, that's so, good uh, you know, that's, that's, good that's where he was traveling. That's right. That's right, kids. It's football season, which means fantasy football. Fat, fat. Sponsored by our friends at Fact. That's a lot of F's. Factory Fix Fantasy Football uh, with Chad and Cheese. <laughs> Uh, our leaderboard looks like this four weeks running. I'm in the number one spot. Uh, this Damn is it. the, the bye week apocalypse, however. Uh, so I, I if I'm going to lose, it's going to be this week. I think, uh, number two, Dean, the daddy Mac mackerel, man, he's, he's, mm -hmm. he's solid. Uh, David Stifel, yeah. I got him this week. Then the number three spot, he's looking pretty, pretty scary. Chad, you're holding up, you're holding firm at number four. And based on I'm your trying. point, your point, your point production, you get a get a uh, some things drop your way, and it could uh, could be top tier for you. Yeah. Won't uh, be this Jennifer, week though. Damn Jennifer it. Terry Tharp, uh, Keith the Commish Sonderling, dude. Keith has had two weeks uh, where if you total mm. the combined points that he's lost is less than four. Mm. If he wins those, <laughs> he's in first place. Uh, sorry, Keith. That's how the ball bounces in fantasy football. Uh. Uh, Christy Lisbon, Laura Martinelli, Dina Perro for Pyros. Action Jackson Dahlquist, 
Sean Horton Hears a Who. He's like right Ooh. now. He's out of the cellar. He's in the 11th spot, which leaves, you guessed it, the number, oh, the number no. 12 spot goes no. to our second Scottish favorite Scott, Adam Gordon. He might want to call oh. up his friend uh, and get some help there at, uh, at Poetry because he is at the bottom of you might want to watch it though. Uh, Key Sonderling might send an auditor your way to audit all these uh, points. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think he has any pull in the Scotland uh, area for any of those <laughs> any of those <laughs> offerings. Jeez, let's get to some news here, kids. In topics. Yeah, well, shit. Let's start with. A little bit of layoffs here. Not layoffs. Uh, it's uh, rumor. Rumors are starting that uh, NAS recruitment advertising, or I think it's recruitment innovation now. Uh, again, with the the changes at this company, uh, apparently they've cut some heads. Someone that I talked to described it as quote brutal, uh, including uh, vice presidents. The COO is rumored to be gone. Uh, it looks kind of ugly. They haven't been able to apparently get get new business keep old business mm -hmm. things are looking bad uh for this for this agency and i've known them for a long time we were sister companies yeah, first job board i worked for job options like i've known them since they were going to going to expos going to sherm with a mm -hmm. velvet uh booth with literally <laughs> newspaper ads cut out and velcroed on the booth and they would show people yeah. the different ads that they did they They've gone yeah. through different ownerships. They've gone through tons of leadership, like tons of volatility. It's kind of a tale of two agencies uh, in our world. We have like, what the hell's going on? Don't know who's in charge. What, you know, like, what's going on? And then with NAS, and then you have like Shaker, which is like three three generations deep, like constant, constant, like constant. loyalty uh, acquisitions. Yeah. Make like so, if you're a customer, if you're a prospect, who would you rather? You know, sign sign a deal with uh, a volatile mess of Conco a collected shaker mess, or mess of a bomb a cyclone. Yeah, the bomb cyclone, <laughs> or are you going with uh, the stable stable one? But anyway, <laughs> maybe there'll be official news. But right now, uh, the rumor is that NAS is going through some some pretty bad times at the moment. Any comment about NAS, Chad? No, you good. No, no. I, they right. were a Goliath at one time. It's 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 sad to see this decline, and and it hasn't been overnight. That's for damn sure. But it they were huge. I mean, just just huge. And mm -hmm. now, I mean, they're obviously dwindling down to just about nothing. And again, as you'd said. You know, Shaker has been very steady, incredibly mm -hmm. steady, and it's been a steady climb, right? It hasn't been, you know, steady across the board, but it's been a steady climb. So, you know, watching many of these companies, I mean, even the radencies, the, the old TMP Worldwide mm -hmm. at the time, uh, where they became tech companies instead of just being agencies and whatnot, Shaker stayed true to, to who they are. Uh, and again, for, for better, for worse, uh, TMP becoming a tech company, they got acquired, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, th there are those times and, and timing means a lot as well. So, uh, sorry to hear that about NAS. Yeah. You know, th there will be a book written one day about the impact of classifieds, uh, the death of classifieds on more than just yeah. the news, all the agencies mm -hmm. and, and people who service them. Like, yeah. I'm sure you saw in the, the election how the Washington Post didn't uh, submit an endorsement for a candidate as well as the LA mm -hmm. Times and um, that all goes back to classified ads, like classified ads funded the newspapers, which funded the oh, news. Yeah. So if, if you're, yeah. if you're unhappy about the state of news, like we caused it by killing, killing the classifieds. Thanks Craigslist. Thanks Craigslist and everybody <laughs> else that was, that was in there. Uh, all right, well, let's get to, geez, talk about change. Aqua yes. acquisition Palooza this week. Holy crap. Wow. Uh, let's get to uh link up first. Global Data has acquired uh, LinkUp, a company near and dear to our hearts. If you haven't listened to our data show, uh, we've got those in the archives. But they've uh, acquired LinkUp, also known as JobDig, uh, to enhance its intelligence offerings, adding LinkUp's real-time indexing of numerous job listings. Uh, shares rose 1.4% after the announcement. Chad, all hail the Sasquatch of statistics, and let us know what your thoughts are on this acquisition. 
Yeah, I mean, to, Toby and the crew over at LinkUp are just damn smart. They saw the need for better and faster workforce data because the BLS uh, is looking 30 days backward on every rec- report and LinkUp can provide day by day numbers uh, of job flows in specific sectors, specific companies, uh, specific job categories, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that that's not even the smart bit though. Instead of trying to sell this tool to the government for their use or sell it to HR and TA leaders to better understand their damn market, Toby and the crew sold to financial markets, you know, the markets with mad cash. So this pivot made a vendor link up selling data to the government and or markets probably 50 times more valuable by pivoting to financial markets. And and here's a great example of what this actually means. Uh, and this is uh, Toby's post earlier this week about NVIDIA. Quote, NVIDIA's job openings are up 35% since July's hiring slump with a growing demand for software developers, sales reps. In fact, posting for sales jobs have tripled over the period, supporting Huang's claim of insane demand for the new Blackwell chips, end quote. So Toby knew if LinkUp data could translate jobs into predicting company growth or loss in the financial markets, that LinkUp could easily surpass anything they could do, even dream of doing in selling products in the HR space. So this type of acquisition is uh, a must for the company who bought global data because to be able to hit their revenue targets, which they're, they're looking to target 500 million British pounds, which is about 630 million USD mm-hmm. by 2026, you got to make these bold moves. And it was a hell of a bold move by link up in my book. This is one of the biggest applause that I think we can give. And that's not just because He's a friend and they were a sponsor, but they did it right and smart. Not only an applause, but it's dead sexy. What are you oh, doing, Stepbro? Very much. Very. Yeah. So I think we, we, we kind of saw this coming. Uh, you and I know him, Toby, as we do. He, he yeah. kind of went like, CEOs do this thing where they kind of like ignore you a little bit and you go like, something's going on. So there's negotiations. They don't want to fuck yeah. shit up. Like something's going yeah. on. So I don't think we, we were surprised by this. And I think that his his uh, his activity on social media, which you outlined, uh, which he's generally not a th- that's not a thing with him. So he started posting about companies and job. I'm like, so I'm like, something's going on. Something is 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 afoot. And and here we go. Uh, job dig, who I think you probably know, was an early yeah. job board um, mm-hmm. back in the day. And then they they launched Link Up. I think in the mid two thousand, maybe 2010 or 11. And it was it was kind of a direct employer's uh, competitor. They they basically yeah. took jobs, direct employers, job search, job search kind of like Indeed with with just uh, jobs or the old Job Central. Yeah. And then um, I think that Toby, being the the brilliant guy that he is, saw the mm-hmm. data, uh, realized that data is the new oil. So if I can like <laughs> sell this data as opposed to just sell access to knucklehead job seekers, like I might make yeah. a little bit more money. Um, and certainly, I think that that has proven out. Uh, it's interesting to me how much job search or job posting data um, is is being embraced by other uh, industries. So it makes perfect sense to say, hey, if someone is posting more jobs, then maybe they're doing pretty well as a business. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a good company to invest in. And those jobs are real-time data, uh, whereas quarterly r- reports, not so much. Um, so that, that makes perfect sense. Or you see, seeing someone like does profile data, how does that enhance other things that a company mm-hmm. can learn about or what Wall Street can know about? The one thing I think that's interesting, though, is as we as we go into a world of more automation, more AI, more headcount reduction, how important is the job posting data going to be if we're replacing so many people with with robots? So no big deal. It doesn't matter now. The deal's done. But I think long term uh, job posting data, I don't know if it's going to have the impact that it does uh, does today, but major kudos to Toby. Uh, we love those guys. Love him. Um, how can you hate anyone from Minneapolis? I mean, Minnesota. <laughs> it's like it's like beautiful. All right, we got a lot of a lot of these acquisitions to go through. Let's hit up. Uh, what's next? Let's talk about Adzuna. Let's do it. Uh, the UK job search platform has acquired Caesar. 
a French company specializing in social media recruitment advertising. The financial deals were not disclosed. Uh, it aims to position Adzuna as a leader in full funnel recruitment advertising across North America and Europe. Now, something new that Chad and I have done is we've reached out to uh, the CEOs, uh, in this case, Doug Monroe, to get his take on exactly what was going on. So we will play each of these videos. We asked why the acquisition, what's the immediate impact, what's your long-term vision, and how much was the deal? This is Doug talking about why they did the acquisition. Hey Chad, hey Joel, uh, thanks a lot for having me on the pod to tell you a bit more about Adzina's acquisition of Caesar. Uh, so why have we acquired Caesar? Um, so Adzina, uh, as a company, we're always looking to grow uh, both organically and through M&A, and we're lucky enough to be profitable and generating some cash at the moment um, so we can do deals in the market. And we came across Caesar. It's a profitable business. It's a growing business. It's a market leader in social media recruitment advertising in terms of the tech, the team, the clients. Um, has a great focus on frontline workers, which fits what we're doing. And the more we looked into social media advertising for recruitment, the more we see it as a massive opportunity. Clients want it. There's tons of people on there that are not on job boards. 79% of job seekers have used social media in their job search in the last year. Um, so we got super excited about the space and then we did our research. We did our research uh, on Caesar, on the other players in the market. Um, both sides, are, we just got really excited. Yeah, yeah, okay, super excited, did his research, Thanks. yada, yeah, yada, yeah. yada. Uh, Good now, job. now let's, let's hear about what the immediate impact will be on the deal. What's the immediate impact of this deal? So for us, it increases our scale as a business and extends our market position in the US um, as well as in Europe. Um, in the US, we've done the groundwork already with our acquisition of, two, of uh, GetWork two years ago, which has gone really well. Um, and the US is already more than half of Adzina's business, even before we add in um, the extra piece uh, from Caesar as well. Um, but what we can do now immediately is offer all of our clients in the US, UK and France um, what we're calling full funnel recruitment advertising. The full, full funnel frontal. means we're combining full social frontal. media recruitment advertising, which gets you those passive candidates and our existing sponsored jobs, which gets you the active ones. Um, so we can get you in front of 4 billion people, uh, active and passive candidates across all of the different <laughs> platforms and really help our clients, particularly with those frontline hard to fill roles. If you imagine you need to find a social care nurse or okay. a store assistant, yeah, yeah. That's like the old days yeah. of SEO where like, we can get you in front of 8 billion, whatever it was, everyone that was on yeah, yeah. search, we can get you in right, front yeah, of yeah. like, yeah, okay. yeah. we can get you in front right, of them. Yeah. Okay, sure it, again, yeah. it makes us look huge that we can put our ads on Google, <laughs> like make us, make us look bad. All right. So what is, what is the long-term vision uh, of this uh -huh. deal? Let's hear from Doug. In the longer term, our plan is to integrate uh, Caesar's candidate engagement platform, which is really cool SaaS tool that helps save recruiters time and effort and turns those candidates into hires. It, uh, for Caesar's clients, it reduces time to hire by 66% versus what they were doing before. Um, we're going to optimize the social offering uh, with AI, um, extend it to more countries, uh, and also work with the agencies to try to integrate this into the proposition that they can sell to their clients as well. Um, and in the really long run, Adzuna becomes the next generation job matching platform. We've got all the jobs from our aggregation side of our business and all of the job seekers that we can access through social media, through Facebook, through Instagram, through TikTok. Um, and so we can use that reach as well as data and AI to help our clients fill roles quickly and easily with only the most relevant and engaged candidates. Um, so super excited about that vision. Globally, nearly 80% of companies struggle to find the right talent right now. And the demographics are only... Okay. okay. Good enough. Uh, okay. Uh, let's, let's get your take on uh, the move by Adzuna to buy Caesar. CESA or Caesar. whatever. It's like, CESA. Can we require all the British CEOs, if we do this again, to, to have to say bottled water uh, if they're in Britain? <laughs> I, love, I love hearing British people say, bottled water. Okay. Adzuna, go. 
So I think it's interesting we hear that AppCast is putting resources into social distribution and now Adzuna buys a social distribution company. Uh, I understand the need to meet people where they are um, in a social standpoint. Uh, it's also interesting that we're not hearing this from Indeed. Now, the, the mention of uh, the focus on frontline workers, that is big. Um, and one of the biggest reasons is because uh, we're looking at the, the prospect of deportation, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's self deportation, I mean, it's, it's going to happen and we're going to need people to be able to fill roles that immigrants are currently filling. Whether we can do that or not, no fucking clue. You'd better have a deep bench people. So you better start using platforms quick. So I think this is kind of like skating to where the puck is, uh, unfortunately, because it's, 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 it's not a good situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and he says 79% of job seekers have used social media in their job search. So I, I went to, I, I did a little anecdotal thing, right? I, I went to TikTok to check on a friend of the show, JT O'Donnell's account, where yeah. she gives advice to job seekers. She has 1.2 million followers on TikTok and, and posts with over a million, uh, a million views. So I think this thing has got legs. The only problem is how do you execute ads on Insta and TikTok? Users don't want to see clip, clip art videos or traditional static ads. They want to listen to people like JT influencers. Mm -hmm. So will Caesar, will, will Caesar use Caesar. influencers, right? This whole optimization with AI doesn't mean anything. Okay. Um, if you don't have the right ads or the right people. So from that standpoint, I believe a platform like, I'm going to give a big shout out to our friend Tracy Parsons over at Flockity. They have more traction since that whole platform is built as an influencer centric platform. So if Adzuna were smart, they look at acquiring a Flockity. If Adzuna's competition was smart, they look at acquiring a flockity because if this is a thing and it seems as it is, as it said, early indications with AppCast really focusing on the social side of the house, Adzuna focusing on the social side of the house, the social side of the house, it doesn't mean old style bullshit ads or job postings. Okay. It has to do with influencers. So how are you going to engage influencers? The only thing I've seen out there thus far from a platform standpoint is flockity. Hmm. You're not going to fall for the banana. And the <laughs> so I, I find this evolution of, of first we saw it with job boards and we'll mm -hmm. talk about a job board getting acquired here in a second. Um, but the evolution of programmatic and sourcing and some of these tools that I guess you could say are getting commoditized or, at best, it's a race to the bottom. Whenever you're a middleman in these industries, it's like who can offer the cheapest price and you just keep going lower and lower. Um, and you could talk more about this in your capacity as, as the job board doctor. Um, but <laughs> I would have to think that programmatic click throughs are, are going down. And you, it's just like uh, if I'm advertising, who's the lowest price? So they're in a position where like, geez, guys, we're, we're in this. We have cash right now. But yeah. we're slowly getting to like less than what we have now. We have to make some moves to to be a platform or to be more than just post your jobs. And mm -hmm. in Adzuna's case, uh, we've talked about what Indeed has done with their sourcing stuff and ZipRecruiter uh, with God knows what this week, uh, trying to be more than just <laughs> being jobs. And in Adzuna's case, it's like, Let's be a platform for marketing. So it mm -hmm. sounds very like much like hire easy or candidate hubs slash candidate ID, maybe even like an out hire. How do we become more? How do we become a place that people come to market, uh, to drive traffic, to be that full frontal funnel or whatever the hell it was that, that he's, <laughs> he's talking about? Um, That's a better name, by the way. That, they're all they're all coming to grips with this whole like job posting thing is not going to be long-term long -term successfully. Uh, it's not going to be a, appealing to our investors. We have to do like outside the stuff. So I think you're going to see a lot of acquisitions. You mentioned Flockity, the, the companies I mentioned, I think they're, they're, on the, they're on people's radars as well. If you're not looking at a marketing platform, an advertising platform, social media stuff, text, mm. texting is part of what um, CISA does as well. So that they do kind of a whole, 
whole holistic thing and not just put your shit on social media. So to me, it's smart. I think it's going to be hard to take a culture that is kind of like uh, low margin, like high frequency, get like go big and then like get really personal and get really sort mm-hmm. of granular around what a customer needs. So I think they have their work cut out for them, but in the, in the short term, I think it's the right move. You're in a, you're an industry that's going to the bottom. Don't be that company that wakes up one day and says, Oh shit, we're done. We're done. Yeah. Well, I, the beautiful thing about the, our job acquisition of the job board doctor was that most of those job boards were doing exactly what the applicant tracking system companies were doing. They were setting it and forgetting it. Right. Yeah. Or at least the companies who bought the applicant tracking systems. Um, so they were setting it, forgetting it because it was just a money machine. Right. I mean, look at Craigslist. They were making a billion dollars and they had less than 50 employees. So it was set it and forget it. Well, yeah. we're not in those times anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. You have to do something different, um, whatever that different might be. In this case, Adzuna wanted to do something different than Indeed. And again, taking a leading indicator from like an app cast. OK, mm-hmm. great. The thing for me is don't tell me about AI. Don't tell me about matching. Don't take d- I want to hear specifics on how these things are actually going to help. I I love hearing that there are business cases and there are, you know, percentages. And obviously it sounds like they've got RPA built into this thing. That's all great. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the details. Let's start talking through this so that we know again, how the fucking sausage is made, right? That's what we want to know. That's what we want to know. And I, and and I think Doug will get there. Um, It's really early. Uh, I did give him a little shit on LinkedIn this week because I said, look, this is a bunch of fucking smoke. I want to see, you know, it. I don't want to hear the sizzle. I want to eat the steak. Right. And I think he's going to start giving. I hope he's going to start giving us some steak. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to downward pressure, I mean, it's it's harder to drive traffic these days. Like email spam filters are better. Uh, SEO is harder. Pay-per-click is more expensive. Like yeah. uh, every everything's compressing on these businesses and they're 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 doing the smart thing in this case of of uh of getting out of uh the old business the old business ways. <laughs> All right, let's get to uh job get. Uh they've acquired Ooh. Snag a job, merging their databases to reach over what they Big. call a hundred million hourly workers in the US. Both will operate independently but share job seeker data. Financial details were not disclosed. Uh, we had Tony Liu, CEO and co-founder uh, at JobGet, talk to us. Uh, first question was, why would they make this move? Yeah, so there's a couple of reasons why we acquired. Uh, first, I think there is a strong alignment of vision just across our two companies in general, because we both focus on you know, the hourly workforce as well as the hourly employers. Um, you know, we also see this word synergy toss around, but between our two companies, we really are seeing a ton of, you know, revenue and cost synergies. That just makes sense. Right. And, you know, I would say the last thing is we do see, you know, despite a very tough economy, we do see uh, some modest growth as well as strong reception from our employers for our products. So we want to really double down and, um, really capitalize on speed to scale from this perspective. Okay. And what is the immediate impact that Tony sees? So very immediately, employers will get access to a lot of additional candidates with wider reach. And candidates also get access to a lot more jobs. So I think that's just the immediate benefit that will be improving our both our, uh, both our user experience from that perspective. Easy right. and smart. Easy and smart. To the point. Uh, Long term vision. You know, so our long-term vision remains the same. You know, our ultimate vision is building this ultimate platform and this home for the everyday workforce. And we continue uh, onto this vision and this acquisition help bolster kind of our future plan here. Um, I will say we are quite acquisitive. So even with this acquisition, we're still in the talks with a couple of other um, similar vision folks to, to really, um, to really try to, realize this vision together. So he's, I think he's teasing us. All of us. He's teasing us right now. He's oh, teasing. Wait. us. Before we get to the last one, mm-hmm. isn't, isn't Tim Hawk running marketing over there? Can, <laughs> can we give him a better background than just some like target, uh, stock big photo job f- get. frame picture Tim should be holding a job, get flag in the Jesus. back. <laughs> How about some greenery or some like real artsy fartsy shit? My God, it's the yeah, I gotta Tim, get, I gotta get on, new man. stuff around here. I gotta get new Tim, stuff. Jeez, Tim. Come on. Go ahead. All right. 
the amount uh, in terms of acquisition amount so we are we are a private, private company so that is not something we are sharing unfortunately mm-hmm. oh come moment. on tony you had me at, at hello, least he Tony. sent a video doug didn't even send a yes. video he just like brushed yeah. right over <laughs> no. like a true no, like no, a true he, brit like i didn't see that i didn't he, what are you talking about no, he, acquisition? he sent it i just didn't send it to you because oh. it was it was like a minute of him ta- telling us why he didn't couldn't tell us it's like okay doug i don't need that and so but between the two ceos i think tony uh understood the assignment right uh he yep. he, he he teased us a lot so we definitely got, got to get him back on the show not just to talk about this but also to talk about future acquisitions because i think i think there are right they're definitely ripe for that anyways so we we saw this fire sale happening um we had snag jobs ceo at the time uh mm-hmm. matt chu stevenson on the show back in july of 19, or 2020 for god's yes. sakes yeah. when uh they were focused on rebounding from the failed rebrand snag in yeah. app launch. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, uh, it just never seemed like snag had the firepower to pull off what they had envisioned. And it reminds me of the Blackberry movie where the CEO says to, to Mike, one of the founders, quote, I thought you said we had the best engineers in the world. End quote. And then Mike said, uh, no, I said we had the best engineers in Canada. Uh, that's where I think snag hit their biggest snag. See what I did there? Yeah, uh, that's good. I don't believe they had the right resources to pull off the rebound that we talked about in that episode. Flash forward uh, to today. Job get gets a big fucking name in the space. High volume space. That aligns perfectly with their own total addressable market. I think it's great timing. I think it's great deals. And if anybody can breathe life into this poor, poor, sad beast, mm-hmm. uh, I think JobGet has a chance. Yeah. Just the tip. So the kids won't appreciate that there was a time not that long ago, well, 20 years ago, mm-hmm. where Snag was mentioned in the same breath with Monster, Career Builder. Easily. I mean, it was a top yeah. five job board um and uh it turns out the the asteroid that is indeed doesn't just kill uh the carnivores it kills the herbivores and everything else and and snag ultimately was a victim of indeed just like uh monster and career builder now we've seen monster and career builder merge and whereas whereas i look at that as sort of two dinosaurs snuggling uh to 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 survive the winter the nuclear winter um this this feels a little bit more like the vulture uh, snacking on the carcass that is snag a job. Uh, mm-hmm. Like you mentioned two years ago, we talked to these folks. The CEO was not from the space. Literally, I didn't come away with any confidence that they were going to turn this around. It was kind of like, no. I'm learning on the job. We'll figure it out. Yada, yada. They have a good brand. A lot of customers love us and good, good SEO, et cetera. And, and a lot of that, I'm sure, has been dwindling significantly snag a job had raised uh 65 million dollars uh and it's passed uh job get has raised 40 million dollars according to Crunchbase. so uh job get to me is basically getting uh something that at once t- at one time was valued quite significantly uh, i'm sure they yeah. still have a nice database of clients uh, mm-hmm. i'm sure they have a nice email database um but there's not a whole lot going forward you think it's a strong brand i don't i'm not convinced of that anymore um it could be again i i i, I would say it's a better brand than job get and if they if job get changed their name to snag a job i wouldn't be surprised and wouldn't uh criticize that think of the all. trust the trust on that domain <laughs> sure I get I get get job and job get confused all the time and i'm a genius <laughs> so imagine what the uh, the average person has a problem with sure now now job get <laughs> is is very app oriented native apps um and looking at their metrics there it's a little challenged i mean it's uh in google play they have uh ten thousand reviews about a million downloads on android now that that sounds like a lot but if you look at zip recruiter uh zip recruiter has four hundred thousand reviews versus 10 yeah. and they have uh 10 million downloads versus a million so JobGet has its work cut out for us. And by the way, ZipRecruiter doesn't really tout itself as an app. People just kind of download it because they know the name. Um, so, yeah, is it a good move? Sure. Uh, is JobGet now this juggernaut that's going to, like, take over the world? I don't – they got the work cut out for them. I still think JobCase has a strong has a strong case, yeah. pun intended, uh, hmm. in that in that spot as well. So it'll, it'll be fun to watch. 
easy acquisition, smart acquisition. I don't know if it's going to change the world, but but uh, yeah, good good for them. Good for them. Good for them. Good for Breeze them. Breeze by bounty. All right, we're done. We're done with our videos. Did you think that was successful? I guess our listeners will tell us like that we'll sucked see. or we shall or, see. Or, it, or it, wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. So let's let's go to some more winning with the acquisitions. Uh, this time, Recruiter dot com has acquired Bounty Jobs, aiming to enhance its recruitment offerings, focusing on integrating Bounty Jobs referral based hiring into its services. No financial details were disclosed. Chad, your thoughts? Recruiter dot com and Bounty Jobs. Yeah, I mean, this to me doesn't seem like much of anything. I mean, we you, you've got a lot of services that are being provided that I think mm-hmm. um, will go away. To be quite frank, I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of these a lot of these services are they're connections, right? Mm-hmm. And people are becoming connected so much faster and so much easier through technology that who is is putting in place the the, the companies the the actual companies are actually putting these things in place we, we talked to companies uh, at client board that i mean shit they, they're connecting the dots very quickly so mm-hmm. i think bounty uh it's been a brand for a very long time not a big brand but it's been a brand it's been a money maker mm-hmm. uh but i mean Maybe it was the perfect time to sell. Maybe it was a clearance clearance uh, rack sale. Either way, I don't think it was going to last for too much longer anyway. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I, you never hear in acquisitions who made the first call. Was it the seller hoping to get a buyer <laughs> or was it the buyer looking to buy, you know, the company that eventually sold. And that, that is a very telling story that we never yeah. get. And in this case, was this bounty jobs calling recruiter and saying, Hey guys, we're interested. Or was it the other way around? Um, I remember when bounty jobs launched uh, 2006 mm-hmm. at a conference and they were kind of like this eBay for recruiters. So you would go on, put your job, and then recruit or recruiters would like bid for it, and you'd pick the the winning bid, and then they would do like it was kind of a cool thing at the time, uh, which obviously didn't didn't have much legs long term. It kind of became a competitor to what the recruiters are doing. So they came to, came to the other side. Um, what I have to think is prevalent in so many companies is looking at big Goliaths doing stuff. And although it may not impact me today, it's probably going to kill me in the future or really, really hurt me in the future. And we've been talking about Indeed getting into staffing for quite a while now. And they've talked about getting into staffing for quite a while now. If I'm like a bounty jobs, I'm looking at that writing on the wall and I'm thinking like, hmm, is it maybe time to get out while the getting might still be good? And I think that that could be part of the the challenge. Again, we go back to automation and 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 that that uh, that reality. Like things are in flux. They've been around since 2006. The founders and people that have been around are probably ready to get the hell out of Dodge. They've been at about a 53 person yeah. or so headcount for a long time. They have long tenured people. It might simply just be like, guys, are we kind of bored with this shit? Like, let's call recruiter.com uh, or somebody and, and see if we can get a bar. That may that may be how this this unfolded. Mm-hmm. As far as recruiter.com, this is a public company. Um, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Like they're they're buying weird shit. Like Matt Charney mentioned, like uh they've changed their name to Nixie on the stock exchange. So they go from recruiter.com to Nixie and their stock symbols in IXX. It's a penny stock. Like I, I, it, I just, I can't get excited about what they're doing. I can't get real excited about where bounty jobs is going. So yeah. No. Did you say nothing burger? I, if you didn't, then, then I, I will go ahead and say paraphrased. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the stock did much uh, on the news shocker. Although with a penny stock, if it goes up two cents, it's like a big day in the market that might have been, <laughs> been what happens but yeah a lot of acquisitions what do you make of all these these uh these sales i mean we we've been we talking about it. we're we, going to see consolidation we, and we're finally seeing it it. it it takes time it takes time it, it takes time for a founder or ceo to actually realize that you know look we're not going to make this runway we're just not going to make it. And yep. with the way that, uh, you know, uh, money's coming out or not coming out, um, you, you, you got to start making those calls. So, yep. yeah. And, and so it takes a minute. It takes a minute. I, so it's not I surprising suspect. we knew it was going to come. 
I suspect we'll be talking about more acquisitions in 2025. Yep. But till then, let's yep. take a quick break and get to some more news. So you post a new job ad, now you can sit back and wait for the application to roll in, right? That's why we built JobPixel. Imagine showing candidates why your company is great with real people, real stories, and real culture. With JobPixel, it's not just another job ad. It's an invitation to something much bigger. Video gives you a three times better response rate. So instead of chasing after candidates, they'll be coming to you. And with a 34% boost in conversions, candidates aren't just looking, they're applying. And if you're worried about people clicking away, don't be. Our video has reduced bounce rates by 25%. That means they're watching, they're engaged, and they're interested. 282% more engagement? Yeah, you're gonna need a bigger inbox. Finding the right candidate is tough, but with JobPixel, it doesn't have to be. Show your company's authentic story, and the candidates will follow. Let's make recruiting fun again, because honestly, it could use some help. Do you want to see how JobPixel can save you time and money while achieving your KPIs? Schedule a demo today. All right, Chad, in the humans are not necessary anymore news, uh, Twine has secured $12 million in a seed round. Uh, established just this year, the startup addresses the cybersecurity talent shortage by developing AI-driven digital employees starting with their first named Alex. Just another digital employee highlighting the fact that companies are working hard to replace the carbon-based employees. Chad, what are your thoughts? So Long here's a quote time. from uh, CA Tech. Uh, the article, quote, the cybersecurity industry is facing a severe talent deficit with the World Economic Forum citing a shortage of nearly 4 million cybersecurity professionals. 78% of cybersecurity leaders acknowledge that their organization lack the in-house skills necessary to fully meet the, their cybersecurity objectives. This shortage heightens organizational exposure for, uh, and forces chief information security officers to focus on firefighting instead of taking proactive approach to risk management, end quote. Means we don't have enough people, kids. So allow AI to do the firefighting for you. What could go wrong? I mean, seriously, but what happens when your AI gets hacked and then gets turned on you, right? Um, you dumbass. think of this, we just saw, and, and again, this is more of a macro, China just unveiled their robotic infantry wolves. Okay. While the U S has unveiled the collaborative combat aircraft, AKA robots that could kill people without supervision. Mm -hmm. Welcome to a combination of black mirror and fucking Skynet, my friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this shit is getting freaky and somewhat scary. Okay, very scary. Literally, I'm not sure I have anything to add. Uh, the numbers I, you quote are the ones that Fuck. I wrote down. And um, yes, look, cybersecurity, war, warfare is happening under our noses that don't show up on news is the cyber mm -hmm. attacks that are every yeah. day that, that the governments of the world work with to do. I mean, corporations are at a, at a, a disadvantage unless your name is Microsoft or Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um hacking is just the part of it getting shut down we've seen you know water facilities we've seen like utilities like these these are serious issues that no one wants to deal with and we don't have enough people uh i, I don't know yeah. if you mentioned the biden administration launched an initiative uh last year to encourage cyber uh, security careers uh, as, mm -hmm. as businesses try to figure this stuff out so our government is aware of it we need it uh, an augmented cyber co-pilot is like a no brainer to me. This company is, is going to, it's, this is boats and hose at this company. If they can pull this off, um, yeah. they'll probably get bought by CrowdStrike or Palo Alto networks, uh, at some point <laughs> and make a ton of money. Yeah. But yeah, 
this is genius. I mean, we talk about digital employees for sales and marketing. Like this is one of those things that people need. I may not need a digital marketer, but I sure as hell need something else than what they I have do, now. But uh, protecting man, you're my company. walking. You're walking a fine fucking line right there, my friend. I mean, the 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 supervision has to be so so close and for Mm -hmm. a human to supervise it you're gonna have to have another program supervise that program yeah i mean it's just it's this is how scary it's getting right so yes is it going to be necessary yeah because you've got to be able to you don't have the people to be able to fight what's going on on the cyber war front so you've got to have ai fight what's going on on the cyber war front unless Mm -hmm. somebody finds a back door into your ai and starts fucking your shit up with your own ai i mean it's just like too much no, when when Sam <laughs> when Sam Altman of OpenAI goes in front of Congress and says we need a uh, you know a national plan, a Marshall Plan, mm-hmm. if you will, uh, yeah. around AI to combat what China and and the evil doers or our adversaries are doing, like that's serious stuff. And yeah. I, I don't want to wake up one day and and my uh, utilities facility is down, uh, my electricity <laughs> is down, my like everything is down. Um, that's no. Yeah. We live in a really scary time uh, and stuff that we don't even see. And did I mention there are aliens in the oceans, Chad? Did I mention? Oh God. Go to an advert. Did, Jesus. Did you see, did you see the, the, the testimony of the congressional hearings on aliens in the ocean no. people? It's no. the it's the no. end. It's the end. No. We can't. We can't. I'm sorry. I'm As sorry. we know it. Thank, Thanksgiving can't come soon enough. Let's take a quick break. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. Here come the AI can interest pimps. You in, can I interest you in some AI pimps, uh, Chad? Uh, this is from this is from Wired. Uh, so Instagram is facing a surge of AI generated influencers who steal and monetize content from real creators using deep fake technology. Gee, did we see this coming or not? Uh, this practice yes. has become widespread impacting genuine creators visibility and more importantly their income despite some app removals instagram's response to this issue has been criticized as inadequate possibly due to the traffic these accounts generate aka the dollars baby it's all about the dollars so chad your thoughts on ai pimps hmm uh, inadequate, uh, AKA, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. So here's a quote from the wired article quote, Instagram is unable or unwilling to stop the flood of AI generated content End quote. So if the content on Instagram were deep fakes of politician or politicians or billionaires, the platform would be fucking shut down. Or it'd be fixed, right? That being said, we're still in the wild, wild west of this technology, but it's maturing incredibly fast and way too fast for legislators to catch up. And to be quite frank, U.S. legislators haven't and won't do anything meaningful anytime soon. So the best chance that these lovely ladies have, these sex workers have, is that the EU create anti deep fake legislation because they're really the only uh mass that can do this and that will move on something like this um because the u.s legislators are just going to continue to flounder they still haven't done anything right so then the workers can focus on content for countries like the european union that's what's going to have to happen Uh, and these individuals will have to start creating content for wherever they can get it to and it can't be deep faked Mm-hmm. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! 
So one of the things that I noticed um, in my feed was like, I think it's one thing to deep fake Joe Biden or a major star. What what I think is really dangerous is sort of this tier two, tier two, like uh, vertical celebrities. Some might mm-hmm. call us vertical celebrities in the HR space. <laughs> like if somebody deep faked us, who would know? Like we're just sort of yeah. a few people yeah. know us. Oh, like that looks like Joel. That's chat. So uh, I get a lot of CNBC or like financial people in my feed, and it's it's uh, it's it's really bad. But it goes beyond just like watching and, and clicking ads and stuff. So this was uh, so Josh Brown is sort of a, a financial guy. Um, he's really pissed off about this. Uh, he wrote a post recently, um, and he said, "quote The entire financial industry." A services industry is experiencing an increased volume and type of sophisticated scams, which are becoming more challenging for consumers to identify. Um, criminals are turning to phone number spoofing, texting, and imposter social media tactics to gain unauthorized access to accounts. So you'll see someone yeah. that you've seen on CNBC that says, hey, I've been trading stocks for forever. You know, uh, join our community to know whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then you join this community. The next thing you know, they want your bank account info. They want you to join the site. They're spamming you crypto. And it's just, you're they're selling this at, uh, at at the face of someone that you know, and they're selling you and, and scamming you and shit. The problem that he outlines is that Facebook doesn't give a shit. Like no. they will they will contact Facebook. They'll they'll take the ad off, but then another ad will show up very shortly. And he's like, yeah. "Look, we know that from we know that from our research that this is coming from Russia, Africa, etc." Like. Facebook can say, oh, you're getting scammed. Oh, if something comes in from Africa and you're a like financial expert in America, maybe we'll check it to see if it's legit. And they're not. They're letting it go through. So I think I think legislation, like you said, someone I don't know if an orange jumpsuit is necessary, but legislation needs to happen where if if Facebook keeps doing this or social media does like they need to they need to get smacked around a little well, bit. It, and real it. quick, it can happen because we had a SNL skit on one of our shows and YouTube automatically knew what it was. It flagged yeah. it and it wouldn't allow us to actually post it. Right. So we had to actually retool that. But YouTube knew that before it even went out to the masses. So don't give me it. And, and they put out a lot of fucking content, dude. Second mm-hmm. best or second most trafficked search engine in the world. Yeah. Right. So you can't tell me that in, uh, Instagram or Facebook can't do this. It's bullshit. Yeah. So it can facial recognize the person, the personality and say, yeah. hey, if someone tries to put them an ad that isn't us, that is this, yep. is me like flag it and don't let flag it go it. live. So definitely the tech is there, but the money. Yeah. The money's just too good, Chad. The money is just too good. Almost as good as my dad jokes, Chad. But this week, oh, what? we're almost at Thanksgiving. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna save you from the dad jokes. You, you look like you're in a good mood, and I'm kind of in a shitty mood. But I came across uh, uh, a social media share this week okay. that cracked my ass up, and it's Thanksgiving related. So let me set the stage here real quick. This is a Detroit sort of daily news show, you know, sort of like Good Morning Detroit kind of show. I know you've yeah. seen these shows before. Uh, so oh, it's, yeah. it's a white man, a black woman, and a white woman talking about dark and white meat. And I think it'll be rel- it'll, it'll be it'll be obvious as to who's saying what. But here here's the scene. <laughs> if you're not watching us on YouTube, hopefully hearing it, you'll be able to make sense of this. I had a really good laugh. I hope you do too. <laughs> it's time to talk turkey, ladies and gentlemen. Dark meat, fattier, <laughs> juicier. I love that dark meat. I know you. That's do. what I went right. <laughs> <laughs> I went right after it with that yeah, leg yesterday. Did. Yeah, you did. I mean, there was no uh, thought about uh, getting a knife and getting those uh, breasts uh, with the white meat. <laughs> it was all about that leg. You prefer the dark meat as well? I have always preferred dark meat, but um, if things don't work out this Thanksgiving, I think I'm going to switch and start going after the white meat exclusively. <laughs> And I mean that sincerely. Mm. Put a little gravy on it. It'll be fine. Right. Yeah, you got enough you gravy. You'll be able to work with it. You just got to, you know, I think I can work with the white meat. I do. She's sending a message. Meat. It's pretty good. It's, it's a little dry. It's consistent. It's reliable. So you got to put some gravy on it. It's always a little same. dry, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. We're, we're still talking about yeah. turkey, right? We're still talking about turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Chad. Next week is our Jive Turkey episode, by the way. Yes. One of my favorite episodes we're getting on our holiday episodes. But uh, 
I had to share that because it got me a good laugh. We out. We out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The chat. The cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout outs of people you don't even know. And yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out.